Welcome to session three of European Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Stanford School of Engineering. My name is Burton Lee. Today is January 25. I'm the course instructor. And today, we're very pleased to focus on Romania and Turkey with two speakers who've flown in all the way from Istanbul and Bucharest to tell us about what's happening in their respective startup scenes. Uh, these are two very exciting startups that uh, are, I think, one has shown a major exit in the past year, I think the, the largest exit in Turkey's history, uh, and a very interesting example of uh, early stage engineering and product design and development out of Romania. Um, so our first speaker will be Radu Georgescu, who is a member of the board of Vector Watch, based in Bucharest and London, and also around the world. Uh, very, very cool new watch concept based around original hardware and software OS engineering in Bucharest. And our second speaker, uh, Mele Odemish. Yes. Is that about, co yeah. about cor correct? Uh, CEO and co-founder of Yemek Sepeti out of Istanbul. Uh, a very interesting, very active food delivery startup, which is doing extremely well and was acquired, acquired last year out of Berlin. Um, so now we're moving from Romania down to Turkey, uh, featuring one of Europe's leading food delivery companies, and I'd say globally, one of the world's leading food delivery companies. Uh, for those of you who follow this space, I don't think food delivery really has gotten as much attention here in the Valley of the US uh, as it has in Europe, but in the last week or so, actually just a few days, uh, both Uber, Uber has announced Uber Eats, uh, Amazon is beginning to take Amazon Prime into food delivery, so this is a space which is really heating up here in the United States. Mela, thank you coming all the way from Istanbul. Tell thank us you. about Yemek Sepeti. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Melih Vedemiş from Istanbul, Turkey. Happy to be here, proud to be here, actually. And thank you for inviting me, Burton, to speak and present Yemek Sepeti and uh, the story of Yemek Sepeti and myself of 15 years. I'm going to summarize 15 years in 15 minutes. So this is, first of all, of course, why am I, I'm here because of Yemek Sepeti, which is an online food delivery platform that started in 2000. First of all, what is yemeksepeti.com? It is an online food delivery business that brings together delivering restaurants with hungry consumers. So at one side, we have us. At the other side, we have lots of lots of restaurants with all the brands that you would know or single restaurants. And at the other side, we have millions of hungry customers. And our business model is we go to restaurants, we make them our members, we, take, we, we do make their menus online. And then we go to the hungry consumers and we tell them to order through us from those restaurants. And in return, we send those uh, orders to the restaurants. They prepare the food, they take it to the consumer, they take the com uh, collection, the money, and we take our commission. At the end, what do we have? We have a business model. On the upper side, we have B2B, business to business. On the lower side, we have B2C. So in total, we have a B2B2C, which is a marketplace business model. So we gain on the commissions that we take from the restaurants. Just to give you a brief idea about where is Yemek Sepeti, why is it significant, why it was bought, etc. Yemek Sepeti numbers. We were founded in 2000. I call it the dark ages of internet around Turkey. We have now around 4 million customers in 64 cities. This is only in Turkey. So although we are uh, operating in around 11, 12 cities, uh, countries in around the region, and we cover around more than 95% of urban population in Turkey, and we serve around 100, 130,000 orders every day, meaning we serve around 300,000 customers every day. But why did we start in Istanbul? So this is a map of Europe, and this is Turkey. And this is Istanbul. By the way, Istanbul is not the capital of Turkey. Ankara is the capital of Turkey. But Istanbul is the biggest city in Turkey and the most populated and biggest uh, city with the biggest economy, etc. But why did we start the company in Istanbul? Because we were living there. That's, the, that's, that's, that's all of it. So, but still, Istanbul was a good candidate for it because it is because some facts about Istanbul. Istanbul is one of the oldest cities in the world. It's like the urban civilization. Istanbul started around 3,000 years ago. It was the capital of uh, East Roman Empire. It was the capital of 
Ottoman Empire, and it's, it's now the economic capital of Turkey. It has, the median age is around 30, so we have a very young population. Um, the, and the population is around 15 million, so it's one of the biggest capitals, uh, biggest uh, metropolitans on earth. And 15 years ago, when we started, it was still a big country, a big city. However, internet penetration was not that popular, so we had only dial-up, and internet penetration overall, it was less than 10%. However, and food delivery was an existing business, but it was not as promising as it, it is today. So we had some, some local restaurants, some local chains with a few branches, and that's it. However, it was, we saw that it was a growing trend, and internet was a growing trend as well, and we were young and brave enough to jump into the space. And so we took the right bet. In 15 years, internet penetration grow, grew up to 70-80% in Istanbul. Mobile penetration was, is basically 100%, whereas like almost half of it is smart, smartphones, whereas the biggest revolution, biggest evolving uh, happened in, in, in the space of um, food delivery business, which is now we have hundreds of local and international chains that are present in all over Turkey. So that's why um, now I'm going to tell you about the world's biggest kitchen, so with 20,000 restaurants. So if we are going to talk about the world's biggest kitchen, we have to talk about the executive chefs of the business, which are the founders. These are me and my two partners, my two executive partners. That, this is a picture that taken by like around 12 years ago in one of the award ceremonies. And years passing by, so through a startup, what happens, of course? So we get older. <laughs> So Jam is not with us anymore. He's living in Brazil. Nevzat is still the CEO of the company, and I'm out of the company after the exit. So, but of course, we were not alone. We had a team. So this is the big team. When we started in 2001, this is the whole team. The ops, finance, founders, uh, that, that's all of it. In 10 years, this is the IT team. This, is, this was my team. As you can see, we have some real superheroes and some fictional superheroes because these guys were working like superheroes. And then if we are talking about the world's biggest kitchen, we have to look at the menu, what we have today for you. So we have, I will give you a brief history of online food delivery. And then I'm going to talk about myself, but not alone about myself. I will give you a context about local and global, what was happening when and where. And then I will tell you about how Yemek Sabiri was born, dark ages, and then a little bit growth stories, a little bit investment stories, and then how the, how the hell the, the exit happened, and then new opportunities about myself and Yemek Sabiri. So a brief history about online food delivery. Everything started around 99, 2000, with three companies without knowing about each other in different parts of the world. So, so here we have seamless they were called Seamless Web. They started in New York. They start, and here we have Yemek Sepeti, which we started in Istanbul, end of 2000. And here we have Just Eat, where they have started in Denmark, small country, Northern Europe. So all these, country, all these companies, without knowing anything about each other, because at those days we didn't have social media, no mobile phones, etc. so nobody knew anything about each other. But we happened to have similar business models but in different parts of the world. Then, around 2005, 6 things got a little bit more warmer. And then GrabUp joins the club from Chicago. Then Rocket Internet, as we all know, joins the club from Europe, whereas they were investors in us as well, but they started their business in Asia. Then Delivery Hero joined the club from Germany. And then this area, online food delivery business, became more and more popular around last three, four years. If you look at it in numbers, though, so just to give you a summarize a little bit how big this uh, business industry is, they pro these companies process millions of orders every day. And if you take into calculation that every order is around 10 to $15, this makes an annual transaction volume of $20 billion with two to three billion in revenues, net revenues for these companies. 
And this still, this area is growing around 30 to 40 percent. That's why Amazon and Uber, etc., are still looking very hungry into this domain. Yeah. So let's go back 15 years, flashback, a little bit bio and context about myself, Silicon Valley, and Turkey. So this is like three parallel universes uh, happening together. On the, the black slides, black bullets are me. The blue is Silicon Valley, and red is Turkey or Yemek Sefeti. So I was born in 76, the same year when Apple was born. In 95, when I finished the high school, Windows 95 was released, and Amazon and eBay were already companies doing active here in Silicon Valley. In 99, when I finished my computer studies, Google was live. In, they were uh, launched in 98, and a very significant event, AOL bought ICQ, which was, what, which was one of the very first peer-to-peer -peer instant messaging platforms from, from Israel. They were bought for $400 million. This was, so far, at that time, one of the biggest buyouts uh, happening in also of Silicon Valley. That's why, it, that's why it was very significant. And then, at the same time, in Turkey, basic portals were around, basic e-commerce companies, etc. So things start to steam up. So in 99, between 99 and 2000, I happened to work only for one year in a professional company, Citibank Turkey. Whereas the, the idea of Yemek Sepeti came into, into the picture with my other two friends. But just after we started our company, end of 2000, we, Turkey was hit by the biggest economic crisis uh, on our history. I'm going to tell you about it later. And same time, dot-com bubble burst in uh, Silicon Valley. So it was not a not a brilliant time, timing actually in terms of starting a company. But we started just before it, so that's why we continued it. So in 2002, I finished my MBA. Same years, eBay acquires PayPal for 1.5 billion. This is a milestone. And then Yemek Sefeti is one years old. And then flash forward, uh, fast forward for 13 years, I'm the CIO, Chief in, uh, Information Officer of the company. 2007, we were awarded uh, being selected as Endeavor Entrepreneurs. 2011, I started my own angel investments. And then 2012, I was still CIO of the company. I started angel investing. Facebook goes public with a valuation of more than $100 billion. This was a big milestone in terms of even Silicon Valley. But also a, a good year for Yemek Sepeti because we, were, uh, we had a second investment from from a, a US company, US private equity company, for $44, $44 million. This was the biggest uh, investment so far in Turkey. 2013, I quit my executive position and started traveling around the world a little bit. And at the same year, Gravovan Seamless merged and then creating the biggest online food delivery company in Turkey. The same year, Turkey was not its, it's having not its best year, a little bit turbulent times in Turkey. We had the Gezi protests in Turkey. 2013, 2014, I was doing the travels in Latin America where Grab Up Seamless from USA and Just It in Europe, the very first companies that I told you about, they went public, each having around 3 billion US dollars of market caps. So this was another milestone in our industry. And that, that, that created a kind of a buzz around Yemek Sepeti and other scaled businesses in this industry. That's why we had our first talks about buyouts for Yemek Sepeti. And 2015, happy end, we got sold. We got sold to a German group called Delivery Hero for almost $600 million, which was the biggest exit in Turkish internet ecosystem so far. And just to clarify, Delivery Hero is part of the Rocket Internet Rocket ecosystem. Internet has shares in Delivery Hero. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So it's out of Berlin. Yeah, Delivery Hero is out of Berlin as well. So, but how did it all happen? So if you go back, so now focus on, on the growth story of Yemek Sepeti. The first year, as I said, we were all out of college. We were all 24, four founders, good idea in an emerging market, etc. So, and we, we had not much to risk, and we started the company. But right after we started the company, end of 2000, in a few months, we had we were hit by the biggest economic crisis in Turkey, which, mean, which meant actually one US dollar was 600,000 Turkish liras in, in, before November. 
And in February 2001, $1 equaled 1.7 million Turkish dirhams. So every, we got, uh, we lost almost a two third of our wealth in terms of dollars. But still, since the company was not making any money or losing any money, so we had no, no business with money, we <coughs> continued our business. But this kind of crisis um, created a big opportunity for us and at the same time, big threat for us. Opportunity because there was no competition. Four years, no competition because nobody dared to enter uh, online businesses because they, had all, they were all in trouble. That's why we had four years of, four or five years of long, long bootstrapping until 2005, where we broke even, 2005. And we were active in three big cities and daily processing 1,500 orders those days. 2005, finally, uh, broadband internet arrived and this meant the survival of the fittest for dot-com companies. And after that, uh, a healthy growth period of two, three years, and finally, 2007, 8, uh, we got our first investment from European Founders Fund, which happened to become Record Internet later. We, it was a minor uh, investment into us, and most of it got into the, the pockets of founders. So at those days, we were active in 18 cities, and we were processing daily $10,000. And then we said, with this investment, we restructured our vision, and we said, we had three main, main areas of growth. First, growth in our core business. Second, geographical expansion. And third, we had to increase our product portfolio. So that's why we, started to, we said we would become the biggest online food delivery uh, company in Turkey and in the region. And on top of that, we had to be number one brand related to food and internet around the region again. So 2008 until 10, we had a major restructuring in the company human resources, IT, etc., whatever you can think of. And 2010, we opened in Russia and UAE. 2012, Russia closed. UAE was grow growing good, good. New countries added in uh, Middle East and Greece. 2012, the result of few good uh, exits and happenings in, in Turkey and also our good growth. We had another round of investment from General Atlantic, this time a big one. $44 million, so far the biggest uh, investment into Turkey, Turkish internet ecosystem, and we sold still minority shares to this big private equity company. With this capital injected, we started, uh, we launched Irmik, Lokum, Papion, and Yemek, we, which were adjacent strategic businesses to Yemek Sepeti, and expanded into more countries in the region. So just to show you in, in perspective, in, in uh, map, how we were growing. This is Turkey, this is Yemek Sepeti, and we, we jumped into Middle East with the brand of Food on Click, so we had to use another brand because Yemek Sepeti is in Turkish, it means food basket. So we had to use another name, foodonclick.com, and here in Greece we used the name clickdelivery.gr. So, but different than many other businesses that you know here in uh, US, we had to use different languages, different alphabets, in different geographies, like this is Turkish, this is from click in English in UAE, this is Arabic version, this is click delivery in Greece. That's why we were a company now in 2012 operating in Turkish, English, Russian, Arabic, and Greek. And then the new product portfolio companies, which is Lokum. Lokum was a delicacy e-commerce for foodies. Papion is a kind of an open table like company for reservations and reviews for eating out. Irmik is a B2B procurement for restaurant owners. And finally, we had Yemek.com, which is uh, everything content around food. Finally, grow the exit part. 2013, we reached daily around 60,000 orders, active in 50 cities in Turkey. 2014, we reached 80,000 orders. And 2015, daily record was more than 100,000 orders. And finally, last, like, around these times, we broke the record of 130,000 orders every day. And the exit part, I call it the MX 3.0. Uh, in May 2015, we were acquired by Delivery Hero from Germany for $589 million exactly. It was biggest internet exit so far, not only in Turkey, and also, but also in the region, like in the Middle East. 
but more pioneering to that, we distributed 27 million of our proceedings to our employees that we have uh, taken, into taken, into in taken the decision in 2012 as a management incentive plan. This was something unheard of in our region. That's why it, it came, uh, it, it created a, a lot of buzz around international media as well. So now we are part of Delivery Hero Group, uh, which is one of the biggest uh, online food delivery companies around the world. And after this exit, what, about, what, about, what, what will happen with me? So I said, I, I started my first angel investment activities in 2011 with Galata Business Angels, which is one of the very first angel, angel investment networks in Turkey. Uh, in 2013, I uh, quit my executive position from the company. I continued on the board and I started to look into more into investments. And, and in 2014, I had realized one of my long awaited, long postponed dreams, which was traveling around Latin America for almost three months. And I traveled around eight countries, 25 locations, most of it by myself. Since four years, I did investments into three funds. Uh, more than 20, 20 angel investments, and I have investments in Turkey, Israel, Switzerland, Greece, and UK. And if you look at Turkish uh, entrepreneurship startup ecosystem today, how does it look today? We have a few investments, a few exits done between the range of, let's say, a few hundred millions up to 600 million, which was us. We, have, we had no unicorns until today, so that's why we need more scaled exits. Maybe we need unicorns. We have three major hubs, Istanbul, Ankara, and Izmir. They're all big cities, Istanbul big, being the biggest one. We have a young and more entrepreneurial tech savvy population. We have a handful of active angel groups. We have a handful of local and international VCs, active ones. We have more and more significance coming from big corporates and private universities, especially the private ones. We have many incubators, accelerators, like co-working spaces, all like here, but in very small scales and very few numbers. So we can say that still the game has just started. And just to finish it, I'll show you some pictures from my uh, road trip in Latin America to give you a little bit like the cheer up feeling. So me in Galapagos, again in Galapagos, this is me in Bolivia, in Salar de Uyuni, which is a salt lake. This is me in Machu Picchu. This is in Bolivia, around 5,000 meters. This is in Cuba, with a local farmer smoking cigar. Yeah, cigar. Yeah, and this is in Patagonia, uh, in Tierra del Fuego, uh, jumping and celebrating freedom. So thank you very much. Uh, another amazing story of success in building company. So in Saudi Arabia, UAE, uh, are, are you the market leader in food delivery today in those in UAE countries? We were. In Saudi, okay. we were like one of the players. Okay. But after the exit, uh, after uh, Delivery Hero bought us, they also bought our competitor. And now as a group, we are the total leader. Okay. Um, so just like to ask you all in the audience to think how many startups out of Silicon Valley uh, have a major presence in Saudi Arabia, UAE, Dubai, for example, almost none. Okay, so this is one of the interesting things about Europe is Europe is much closer to these emerging markets, MENA, for example, than we are here. Questions? Yes, Alberto. So first of all, congratulations. Um, uh, just, uh, I think, looking from, looking to you about what's happening in Europe, probably Europe is the internet relevant and underestimated thing, meaning they are really creating a, a unicorn food delivery that is able to compete with what's happening over here. And you provide from inside some more information about the vision of the internet, what they've done, and specifically what they've done in food delivery. In food delivery? Yeah. So they think that they are putting together all this company from over Europe and creating something. Um, they, are, they are doing better things in other areas that they are doing in, in food delivery. But in terms of uh, merging those companies and accelerating the growth and be, I mean creating a, a world player, so to say, they are doing a good business. 
but they are not doing that. They are not very successful in Europe. They are successful in Asia, for example, but they are coming from that part. They are a little bit successful. They were a little bit successful in Middle East, but through us and through to, to their partnership in in Delivery Hero as well, they became one of the players, big players in the world. So I mean, they are now in Europe. There are three big players. One is Rocket Internet. Second is Delivery Hero. And third is um, Just Eat, of course. So, but Rocket Internet, although we, they, are, they get criticized a lot in terms of what they do, or how they do copycatting, copying every business, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, we see that all over the world. And their aim, their vision is to create the biggest internet company outside of US. So that's why I, I think they're, they're doing a good job on that. Question. Let's see, did we have someone? So Rocket Internet has the goal of being the largest internet company outside of the United States. Yep. OK. That's quite interesting. Yep. Um, where, where do you see consumer versus B2B going in Turkey to, today? Uh, I mean, we don't see many B2B startups coming out of the region. That's right. Did you see Turkish companies becoming more active in purchasing software, employing software in yeah. their internal business systems? Definitely, definitely. For example, so far uh, until just one year ago, most of my investments were in the B2C, in the, in B2C domain. However, I have now two investments and both of them very active and very prominent in B2B business, like software service, or, um, for example, one of them is HR services as a software as a service business. So I think more and more B2B businesses are going to be there. However, Turkey is a big market and big, big consumer market with 80 million of population. That's why we see more and more, more uh, B2C businesses which are like us, uh, more like, visible. B2B businesses are less visible than B2C businesses. But I think in general, the MENA region, it's, it's a very tough B2B market. You know, to go into Saudi Arabia, Dubai, UAE, doing B2B, the number of companies there that are active, you know, actively purchasing the software, it's, it's not a huge market. That's is, that, right. is that correct? That's right, because the perception of uh, software, the, the, the resources uh, spent for software or B2B businesses is less valuable perceived than it is in is perceived in, in Europe or in US. Right, right. Yes. So, uh, question. Why would anyone care about being the biggest internet company out of outside of the US? Hell, why would they even care about being the biggest company in the world? Why would you limit yourself to that? That's not I don't see how that is a goal in and of itself. Don't they have another goal? I think of course, I mean they are making money anyway. Yeah, uh, but if you are, I mean, look at the, the, the title of this course. It's entrepreneurship in Europe. Yeah. So it's the whole the whole world is trying to create other Silicon Valleys, and it's not very easy. It's very difficult. That's why some ambitious guys like us, like Summer Brothers, like like other companies from Asia, etc., they are looking at US and they are trying to compete with them and they are trying to compete and create even bigger businesses. Out of them, that's all about ambition. That's all about ambition, creating big things. So, if I could add, uh, ambition, ego, but also national pride. You know, there's there's a lot of pride in every one of the countries we present here about who they are, and about building great technology companies and great technology. And so, if you take a country, for example, like Germany, Berlin, the history of Berlin. Uh, the sense that, hey, we're Germany, we're Germans, we can build great global companies too, just not in automotive or in chemicals, but software as well. So it's, it's more than ambition at a, at a yeah, personal course. level, it's, it's also national, yes, sir. national pride. It seems a bit vanity there, a bit of vanity. Like they, they probably didn't start wanting to do that. No, they, they started in Rocket Internet just with this vision. Question, yes, question in the back. Are you concerned at all about companies, American Pacific and Valley tech companies like Uber and Amazon coming in? Or is it the opposite, that why are they possibly having big guys to come in and they're going to be swapped? Which way do you think that? In into Turkey, you mean? Yeah, and, and into other markets. Um, many, many companies try to, I mean, this, I mean, this food delivery business, food business is a local business. It's not Facebook, it's not Instagram, it's not WhatsApp. 
So it has a very big offline operations arm. So one business that you could maybe, maybe uh, create an analogy could be Uber, because they also have a, a physical arm. However, Uber still, they have Uber Eats, for example. I doubt that they would be successful in this business because it's not a, it's not a car and man carrying business. It's a, it's a very fast, agile food business. So it's very local and it has local uh, taste in it. And it has very local um, differences in it, niches in it. That's why uh, we don't have any Amazon in this business. We don't have any Yahoo, any Google in this business. We have all these big players, regional big players. And they are merging with, it, with each other, creating world domination. I, I don't think that one day we will, will have just one Google or one Apple in this business. There will be many different players, but in each market there will be a leader like there is that, uh, that like we have today. In Turkey, we have yemeksebiz.com. Since it was so powerful, nobody dared to enter and compete against us, but they bought us, like in any other uh, marketplace business.